In the ongoing uh, discussion about whether or not to give DC statehood, Washington DC statehood, uh, <laughs> Representative Mon Mondaire Jones uh, ruffled a few Republican feathers that were in opposition to this uh, when he spoke about um, the racist trash that they've been presenting as reasons against the proposal. Uh, first, let's listen to what, um, <laughs> well, I won't tell you who it is, but one of the senators that, uh, that Mondaire Jones has an issue with and his racist trash argument. Let's see. Washington doesn't have the size or diversity of interest of even the smallest of the 50 states. Washington also doesn't have the diversity of interest and financial independence that Madison explained were necessary for a well-functioning state. Yes, Wyoming is smaller than Washington by population, but it has three times as many workers in mining, logging, and construction, and 10 times as many workers in manufacturing. In other words, Wyoming is a well-rounded, working-class state. A new state of Washington would not be. It would not be. Jake, why is that a racist statement? It's just talking about the working class people of Wyoming. They're hardworking people. They're not like Washington, D.C. because everyone in Washington, D.C. is a politician. Yeah, so now the reality is uh, uh, Washington would be the only state uh, with a plural plurality of black voters. And so when Tom Cotton says that it would not be a quote, well-rounded working class state, those statements are not at all subtle. He puts a fig leaf on it by starting with, "Oh well, Wyoming might be smaller because wait, why is the 700,000 people in Washington not allowed to have federal representation?" Uh, they say, you know, one of the old lame excuses was it's too small. Well, Wyoming's smaller, so should we take away statehood from Wyoming? No, those are good white folks. I mean, I mean, well-rounded working-class <laughs> uh, uh, people. And so the fig leaf he puts on it is, well, they do logging and mining. Why is that relevant? And how does that make them more well-rounded? Do a lot of you do logging? <laughs> do you have to do logging to be a state? What kind of an insane standard is that? <laughs> and obviously that's not what he means. I mean, working class state, what the 700,000 people in Washington DC don't work? Yeah, that's what he's implying because he's like, they're black. What are you gonna do? The Mondaire Jones response to it was awesome. But but before we even get to Mondaire's fantastic response and then the fake crying by Republicans. Okay. Julie, there's, I can't think of an excuse for not having Washington as a state and saying those 700,000 Americans shouldn't count and, and so, I don't, do you think it's because they're out of completely out of excuses that they go to logging, mining, well rounded working class people, et cetera? Or are they just basically going, now remember everybody, they're black, so we just don't want them to be a state? Well, you know, obviously it's a bad faith argument. We can see that on its face. Um, it, and what's funny is by his logic, Texas should have its statehood revoked because we don't have logging or mining either. <laughs> so we're probably not a well rounded working class state either because we don't have those industries here. Uh, but it, it is, it's just bad faith. It's bad faith on his part. And I know we're about to watch the clip of Mondaire Jones uh, schooling them. And I look forward to that because I got a preview of it. So, um, Julie, I don't like keeping you waiting. Let's do that. Mondaire Jones speaks out on this. Let's go. Had enough of my colleagues' racist insinuations that somehow the people of Washington, D.C. are incapable or even unworthy of our democracy. One Senate Republican said that D.C. wouldn't be a, quote, well rounded working class state. I had no idea there were so many syllables in the word white. One of my House Republican colleagues said that D.C. shouldn't be a state because the district doesn't have a landfill. <laughs> my goodness, with all the racist trash my colleagues have brought to this debate, I can see why they're worried about having a place to put it. The truth is there is no good faith argument for disenfranchising over 700,000 people, Mr. Speaker, most of whom are people of color. The old saying is a kick dog will holler. <laughs> Let's listen to that. Here comes a couple of dogs hollering. Mr. Speaker, I know the gentleman's words we take it back. The rules say my step point of order when the words need to be taken. Does the gentleman from New York ask for unanimous consent to withdraw the words? Mr. Speaker, that's fine. You have my consent to withdraw.
So Mondaire uh, Jones went ahead and he, he gave them uh, permission to withdraw because it's already been said. Let's keep it real. Um, I never understood that. I never understood that rule. But anyway, I'll explain it goes. Uh, <laughs> but he went and removed it and they moved on. They were screaming and hollering and upset uh, because of what he pointed out is the actual thing. I'm gonna get into the background of, of this debate, but uh, just on that on that back and forth. What do you guys think? So number one, I, I love that speech uh, because. It's not just that the content was great, and it was. I didn't know there were that many syllables in white. <laughs> come on, come on, Mondaire. That was great work, okay? And he looked down to make sure he got those words right. <laughs> That's right, hit him, hit him harder, right? Um, but more importantly, it's a an almost never seen Democrat saying, yeah, I'm gonna insult the Republicans. Usually Democrats are scared of their own shadow. They're like, oh, our beloved Republican colleagues. And Nancy Pelosi, just a couple of months ago, was like, I hope the Republican Party is so much stronger. Why? They're terrible and they're in opposition to you. So it was just such a breath of fresh air to see a Democrat stand up and call the Republicans what they are, racist trash. And so, and 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 JR is, so look, the, the explanation is, the House has all these antiquated rules about how you can't insult people, etc. Mm -hmm. Right, and of course, the thing that the word that triggers the Republicans the most is racist. And so, when he said racist, they're like, "How dare you? We don't think black people should be able to rule themselves." Okay, but you're not allowed to call me racist because I'm one of the elites, and according <laughs> to the rules of the elites, we are not allowed to be criticized. <laughs> so I do declare, withdraw your comment. And so look, if he doesn't withdraw the comment, it triggers BS t technical rules. So like JR said, he got the point across. Mm -hmm. We're all talking about it. Who cares if you technically withdraw it? So it's like, oh, I'll give you permission to withdraw. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's gonna be on the nightly news anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, mission accomplished. By the way, the rest of the Democrats, you see that? That wasn't so hard. I agree. Uh, and I'll the only thing I can add to this is if it looks like a duck, if it waddles like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. And uh, Representative jo uh, Mondaire Jones called him out on it and it was beautiful. And yeah, he could he can uh, retract his comments after the point of order was called, but it was already recorded. And thank you, thank you, thank you for speaking up. Because there's a history behind that. And I'm gonna go really fast so for people who did know. We're gonna jump to the third uh, uh, graphic here because uh, I, I knew there was a background to it. I didn't even know all of it, I knew some of this. Uh, so Confederate lawmakers explicitly rejected, this is back in the day, rejected DC's various attempts to self-govern and, uh, and elect its own representation because of its large back black population. That's the fact here. Now, this, this is where it gets proven. Uh, in the face of this influx of Negro population from the surrounding states, uh, Congress found it necessary to disenfranchise every man in the District of Columbia in order to thereby to get rid of this load of Negro suffrage that was flooded in upon them. That's from Senator John Tyler Morgan of Alabama, who owned slaves. This is in 1890, he said that when he, and he used to own slaves because that's something that he was still holding on to. We still got people not holding on to it. Um, so Morgan also, he went on to explain that Congress got rid of the local leadership in the city to quote, burn down the barn to get rid of the rats. The rats being the Negro population Oof. and the barn being the government of the District of Columbia. Lastly, the House eventually voted on party lines to uh, 216 to 208 to pass HR 51 on Thursday. Um, and the White House also endorsed that measure on Tuesday saying the statement, for far too long, the more than 700,000 people in Washington, D.C. have been deprived of full representation in the U.S. Congress. So there's that history behind it and people explicitly saying what now Republicans are saying quietly, or at least trying to kind of sort of say quietly because they still need their constituents to heal, still hear the racism. So I wanna come back to how this could pass in a second. But real quick, two points here. Number one, I just wanna give you the context of the quotes that JR gave you. The reason that Washington DC has a lot of black folks in it is because it was the first place where the federal government outlawed slavery. So a lot of the emancipated slaves went to Washington and that is why it has such a heavy black population. Now that is in a sense a positive history, right? And by the way, slaves built the White House and all of Washington DC. That's another piece of context for that, etc. But when there were so many African Americans in, in Washington, they began, oh, of course, win elections after the Civil War. And so that's when the racist senators in the former Confederacy, like the one JR quoted, said, we don't want them to have self-rule. So we're not going to allow them to have any effect on federal 
uh, laws, so they're not allowed to be representative in the House or the Senate, so they're not, they don't get to be a state. Plus, we're gonna take away their local representation. And in fact, the, and I didn't know this either, this is amazing. Washington DC didn't even have a mayor until the 1960s when the civil rights movement happened because the Confederacy had blocked the people of Washington from ruling themselves, governing themselves, because they said they were rats. You heard the quote, black people are rats, yeah. and so we're not gonna let the rats run the ship. And that's why they're not gonna get any local representation or federal representation. And yes, that changed locally in the 1960s, but the federal representation is still the same. The same people who called black people rats and said that's why we're not giving them the vote. Today, their descendants are saying, I mean, black people, uh, I mean, Washington <laughs> would not be well rounded and a working class state. That is a sophisticated way of calling them rats, although it's not that sophisticated. And so it's anti democratic, meaning. They don't get a vote in federal matters. It's insane. It's unconscionable. There is no excuse for it. And and the same racist today go, no, we don't want black people to represent themselves. And we don't want them in the Senate. So we're gonna say, you're not allowed to get a vote. Finally, wait, the House passed it, Biden's in favor. What does that leave? The Senate. So I wanna be clear about one other set of folks who are guilty here. So why can't we get it? Because the Republicans would filibuster it in the Senate. Even though the Democrats have the majority, the Republicans would say, "Oh no, 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 we're racist trash, and we've said all the racist things already. We don't want black people to get their own, get a state in the in in terms of Washington D.C. So we're going to block it." But they wouldn't win if we took away the filibuster. But Manchin and Cinema and other Democrats go, "Yeah, but if we take away the filibuster." Well, then uh, my corporate donors would be very displeased. And then we might get $15 minimum wage and other things that they do not want. So we'll go along with the racist Republicans and make sure the people of Washington DC are not represented. So that is the giant gift that Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema give the Republican Party. They could have 50, right now they could have 102 senators uh, in the Senate, and yes, the Democrats would likely pick up those two seats because the Republicans are the racist parties. That's why they're not likely to win in Washington, D.C. And Manchin and Cinema say, no, we do not want to help black folks. We do not want to help Democrats, and we don't believe in democracy. We believe in helping Republicans do their racist trash. That's just a fact. That's a fact, and that's on them. And if they want to explain why they want to help Republicans, uh, they can give me all the pretty talk about parliamentarians and Senate tradition. And by the way, the Senate tradition they're using here to block the DC statehood, the filibuster, was used exclusively for the first 100 years or so to block civil rights legislation. Again, the Confederate states said under no conditions will we allow any black people in our states to have rights. And they filibustered only every time that it was used. It was used to filibuster civil rights legislation, including on several prominent occasions, anti-lynching laws. They filibustered to make sure that they can continue to do lynchings in the South. That's the great tradition of the filibuster that Manchin and Cinema and other corporate Democrats are protecting. That's the reality, that's the reality they don't want you to know and that's uncomfortable, but that's also true. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.